everybody and welcome to today's tutorial. Um, I'm just really happy and glad to hear that a lot of you are benefiting from the from these tutorials. I just um, decided to do this basically because I would have loved someone to do this for me when I was back in VC. I remember I could not find people that would clarify issues for me and just clarify those little distinctive points that really get you to grab the marks. So just keep listening to these tutorials and if you want me to make one on a particular topic, email me or write to me, I'll be happy to do it, okay? So today what we're going to be going through is we're going to be having a look at um, the assumptions we're making in calorimeters. So these are very important um, concepts for your SAC, okay? And um, it's just, yeah, basically we've got um, in, the, in the calorimeter what we have is we've got a reaction happening in some kind of little metal frame or it can be glass or it's in a container within your water okay so this container is dumped into the water and basically uh, by a reaction happening that reaction is able to release energy into the surrounding water okay so whatever stuff we have in there um, we assume this is one of the very first assumptions we make we assume that the heat gets transferred directly into the water Okay, we don't want the heat to remain within your metal frame or within the inside of that, co of that little container because then that's not as accurate. If you put it in a thermometer, you're not getting an accurate result. Okay, so that's one of the assumptions we're making. We assume that it is 100% efficient, even though we theoretically know it can't be because inside the container, it's still really hot. Okay, so still a little bit of heat left in there. But anyway... The next thing we assume, so that's assumption one, there's 100% heat transfer, heat transfer. The second assumption that we are making is, assumption number two, is that this calorimeter itself is very well insulated. We cannot have this energy going out into the exterior. And what we know is that generally that is the case, you know, you've either got heat going out or heat coming back in. And so what we assume is that the um, calorimeter is perfectly insulated. Perfect insulation happens. Okay, so you just keep that in mind when you're dealing with these calorimeters that they are not perfect. But because we make these assumptions, that way we can um, ignore those errors that happen, okay? So, the next thing I wanted to go through with you is this concept of um, calibrating a calorimeter, okay? So, before last tutorial we discussed, um, we discussed energy and we discussed this equation, if you remember, energy equals to mc change of time, and change of temperature, sorry, and I told you that if you know the mass of the water in the calorimeter, then you can figure out the energy that is delivered just by finding the change of temperature um, and what type of change in temperature occurs due to a reaction. But there's a catch to that because sometimes you do not know the mass of your water. Sometimes you don't know how much volume you have in your calorimeter. Okay, so in those cases, we do something else. This is called calibration, calibrating a calorimeter. So if I just draw out another calorimeter, okay, um, here we go. All right, so there we go. And here we have some water. If I don't know how much water I have in there, I'm not going to pour all that water out, measure it, pour it back in, because that's going to take me forever. Okay, so what you do instead is you add in a known amount of energy and see how much that calorimeter content increases in temperature by. So, I'll show you why that is important, okay? Now, we do this by using something known as an electric heater. Electric heater. And what the electric heater is, the importance of it, is that we can actually find the energy that we are delivering into this water. So we add in an electric heater and the energy from the electric heater, the energy from the electric heater can be measured by um, getting the voltage, that's volts, getting the current, I is the current and it's measured in amp, amps, okay? And getting the time, the 
you apply, you know, the time that you have your heater in there. So the time is in seconds. Time is in seconds, okay? So now um, this is really useful because each one of these can be measured, okay? That's why we use an electric heater because voltage, current, and time can be something measurable, okay? Whereas we had a problem because we couldn't measure the volume inside that calorimeter. Okay, so once we know how much energy we've delivered, okay, we use a thermometer, okay, there's another, there's like a thermometer in there also, and that thermometer um, and a stirrer and everything else, the thermometer is going to give us a change of temperature, a change of temperature due to this energy that we've inputted, okay, so the change of temperature can be now found. Change of temperature is something, okay? And what we can do is we can relate the amount of energy that we've inputted into the system and we can um, divide that by the temperature change of the water within that system, okay? So essentially what we can do is we can set up something known as a calibration factor. So a calibration factor, calibration factor is... The amount of energy you've placed in, so it's the amount of energy that you have delivered, which remember is VIT, divided by how much temperature that water changed by. And so now you have something in terms of uh, relating your amount of joules to the amount of temperature that that particular calorimeter changed by. And this is essential for your understanding of calor calorimeters, okay? So that is how you calculate something known as a calibration factor. Now, let me just show you um, why exactly we do this, okay? So let us say 